to kick off this year's leadership conference, we're honored to be joined by Mary Davis, CEO and uh, special for Special Olympics. Uh, 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 you know, this is a, I would like to share, you know, the, I would like to know, to, to share some words of, she, she's going to share some words of encouragement and give us some, you know, organizational direction. And I know many of you that joined Special Olympics recently have not pers personally met Mary. Um, and uh, let me assure you that when global travels, travel is much safer and resumes uh, like uh, she has in the past, Mary will visit Africa because she promised us. <clears throat> and uh, as you may know, some of you may know, if you see this photo here um, displayed, Mary has attended one of the past leadership conferences in Johannesburg in South Africa. And at this conference, we conducted a special African installation ceremony during a welcome dinner and we installed Mary as an African. Soon she will receive her passport, an African passport. We are, we are working on it, Mary. So on a serious note, uh, Mary having experienced uh, and, and uh, you know, originated from Special Olympics grassroots, she has experienced and has full understanding of local programming, what the needs are there, and we are fortunate to have a CEO that has a master, that is a master at Special Olympics local programming. Well, without talking much, I want to um, ask you to join me in welcoming Mary this morning as she uh, gives us a, a, a few words this morning. Mary, over to you, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Charles. And it's absolutely wonderful for me to have the opportunity and to be invited by you to uh, join in this uh, leadership uh, conference, this very important and substantial leadership conference that you have organized and put together with so many programs uh, participating. I'm proud to be an Afrikaner and can't wait to get my passport. I have great plans for when I retire, Charles, to both myself and my husband, Julian, to spend some time in Africa on the ground, back to the grassroots, where we both started out in uh, Special Olympics as young teachers and students. Uh, so great to, uh, to be here. I just want to, to join with all of you in solidarity, first of all, and in memory of those athletes uh, that uh, have passed have passed on, not just athletes, of course, but many coaches we saw, volunteers, family men, members. And um, I think what it reminds us is that we continue to uh, suffer from COVID. It's still here, it's still around. And um, despite the, the vaccines, uh, we still are uh, losing many of our, our athletes and coaches and uh, volunteers. So I just wanted to take a moment to, uh, to, to, to join with you in memory of those uh, lost, lost lives. Uh, the, I thought the video was fantastic, Charles. I think looking at the, the video and seeing that you have now 36 accredited programs. And I know that uh, Dr. Shriver was joining us from Abu Dhabi. And of course, that's where the, many of those programs started out. Uh, I think you had 21, 23 programs maybe before that. So what a huge increase in numbers of programs since 2019. And the fact that you were able to continue that programming throughout the most, the most difficult years that we've had of this uh, pandemic. And that every single one of those programs has thrived and succeeded. That is a testament to the passion, to the hard work, um, that each and every one of you at this conference, all the program leaders, the regional staff and teams who have supported you every step of the way. That is why you have 36 accredited programs and one founding program today. And despite the destruction of COVID, you haven't stopped, you have continued. 
we want to support that effort and that continuation of those programming in whatever way that we can. We have lots of information on our resource pages and I would urge you all to use the resource uh, pages that we have both on COVID and other matters to inform you and keep you uh, and, and keep you engaged. So you heard from Dr. Shriver, now you're hearing from myself, you'll be hearing from Dr. Dow uh, in a couple of moments as well. And it's all an indication of how much we care about each and every one of you, your athletes, your family members, your coaches, your volunteers. Um, we want to support you. We want to do whatever we can to ensure that your region thrives. And when you look at Dr. Shriver, and there he is traveling all over the world to bring that urgent message of inclusion uh, to communities uh, around the world, that's our job, that's your job. And if there is any way that we, all three of us can support you, we absolutely stand uh, ready to do that. But it's quite amazing what you have been able to do, as I said before, despite COVID. And yesterday, uh, yeah, I think you sent, or Dr. Dow sent me a video of uh, Tanzania and the work that they're doing in terms of, um, uh, in terms of the Fit5 uh, cards. And of course, there are many areas where you cannot reach your athletes because uh, there isn't the possibilities there through because of uh, lack of internet services or lack of hardware or whatever the reasons are. But did that stop you and your countries? No, it didn't. And to think that Special Olympics Tanzania was able to reach two and a half thousand athletes with very little funding, a small amount of funding that came through the SNF grant. It's just quite incredible. So for that and for, for that's just one example of what's happening in many other programs uh, in, in the Africa region. So I can't thank the program leadership, the board members, the program staff for ensuring that all of the programs continue to uh, function even through those very difficult uh, times when many organizations had to close their doors because they either didn't have staff, they didn't have volunteers, they didn't have personnel and they just weren't able, didn't have the resilience to keep going. You have shown how strong and resilient you are as a, as, a, as, a, as a region. And looking at the video as well, uh, Charles, I did note that yes, of course, you did lose your numbers went down in terms of athletes and coaches, particularly over the years of the pandemic. Um, but on the other hand, I also noticed that your athlete leaders and your family members increased in those years. And again, that's a great testament to the work that you, you are able to do with families through Zoom and other methods through the cards that I mentioned uh, as well, because I know they were distributed uh, widely, not just in Tanzania. Um, but what you were able to achieve in terms of increases despite uh, the losses. And as uh, Tim and I'm sure John will talk about, yes, we are setting up the emergency fund and we uh, will help in whatever way we can to assist you to ensure you have the wherewithal to get all of your athletes and coaches and family members back into uh, the program and to reach out even further and to expand your, 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 your programs. Um, in relation to the vaccines, I just want to remind you to continue, please, uh, continue to seek the, vast, the, the vaccines. I know it can be difficult to, um, to access the vaccines in some of your countries, uh, but uh, you will know from the um, education, the comprehensive education program that was done by the regional staff uh, last year, the importance of uh, the vaccine. Uh, COVID is still there. Sadly, you know, we had some information from Frida, our regional president and managing director in 
uh, in East Asia yesterday to say that she's not able to get to Shanghai and that many other countries and many other uh, regions and provinces are closing uh, because of the rapid spread of, uh, of the Omicron virus. So whilst we may think that it's over, it's not over yet. So please remain vigilant. Uh, I, I still suggest, even though masks aren't worn, it just don't seem to be worn as much now worldwide, continue to wear your mask, continue to, uh, to do your hand washing, et cetera, and uh, reach out and try and access the, the vaccine. It's just so, so, um, so, so important. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about our priority areas. Of course, the strategic plan is our roadmap for uh, the future for, for, for a long number of years, uh, in fact. And um, aligned with that for this year, we have three priority areas. One is to ensure that our athletes are well prepared to come back onto uh, the playing field, not just in their own countries or in your own region, but at the two up coming um, global opportunities that we have in Michigan. I know many of your programs are involved in the Unified Cup in June or the end of, uh, end of, uh, the, the end of July, actually. And um, I look forward to meeting you all in person there for those programs that will be participating in that. And of course, then next year in 2023, we have the summer games in uh, Berlin, and I'm sure many of you are training and preparing for those. Now is the time to be thinking about the funds that are required to prepare your team, uh, to provide the, uh, all the necessary uniforms and tickets for them to get there. Uh, so I would urge you to start the preparations uh, early and make sure that you have uh, secured the funding. And I do note in the agenda that Charles sent me that you have a full day tomorrow focused on uh, fundraising discussion. And I'm glad to see that focus as you will uh, need to find creative ways to increase your funding and to ensure that you have the resources to be able to send your uh, teams. Uh, the second area I want to talk just a little bit about is the digital transformation. And I did mention in the programs or in the countries or in the parts of Africa where it's difficult to access uh, digital that you have find, found so many other innovative uh, ways to reach out to your athletes. And I applaud you uh, for, doing, for doing this. Uh, but we also do want to push forwards and ensure that we are getting the expertise in technology and we're getting the hardware that we require. So what I would urge each and every one of you as programs to do is in your own country, find the uh, companies that can help you in this area. If Dell or situation in your area, if any of those tech companies knock on their doors, they are expecting you. Uh, they won't be shocked by your presence. Knock on your doors, tell them what you do uh, and, and ask for their help and their assistance. And you'll be surprised that even if one door closes, another one will open for you. And ultimately, you will get the resources that you require. In some cases, it's just hardware you need. It's access to mobile phones, uh, etc. So don't be shy. You have a great, great story to tell. Your passion when you talk to these uh, companies will shine through and you will get uh, what, you, uh, what you need. So I urge you to, uh, to, to do that. And of course, the third area, which I couldn't leave you without mentioning, is the expansion and development of the grassroots uh, program. As Charles said, I came from the grassroots programming, and that is my real uh, passion. And every day, if every single one of us that uh, work in Special Olympics wherever we are, if we're not concentrating on how we can impact the local program, then we're not doing 
our job in the way that we should do our, our job. So I would encourage you, you are the closest to the local program than anybody will ever be in your national programs to look to those uh, local. And I know you do, and you go out and you find your athletes and your family members and you get them involved and you provide the uniforms for them and you get them into Special Olympics activities. I've seen the videos over and over again. I would urge you to continue to do that. I would also urge you to continue uh, to expand your programming at local level. So for now, if there's a program that concentrates it's fully on sport and you don't do a health program or you don't do the unified um, education program or you don't do the leadership program that you would look towards uh, towards uh, involving and getting involved with one of those programs and we will support you our team at headquarters and the regional staff will support you in whatever way that we can to get those programs up and running. And we do have some grants from time to time in the health area and in the leadership area that you can apply for when you're starting out uh, to implement a program like that in your, in, as part of your local programming. So I encourage you to look at your programs, see what activities you're doing, uh, and, and see how you can uh, expand on that uh, over time. I want to welcome that new founding committee that I saw on the video, Cameroon. It's fantastic to see that Special Olympics uh, Cameroon is up and running and I wish you the very best uh, of luck in the development and in the urgency of the inclusion revolution that uh, Tim uh, referred to. So before I finish then, I'd just like to recognize and acknowledge uh, a, a number of people the people who serve as part of the Africa Regional uh, Council leadership, uh, your support is valued. And what I would say to the other programs is that it may not be part of the Leadership Council to make sure that you make good use of the leaders that are on that council. They're there to do a job. Uh, they're not there just for the sake of it. So you want to make sure that you involve them uh, and get their assistance and their help. The same way with the Athlete Input Council. You probably have one of the strongest Athlete Input Councils uh, in the entire world. And I had the joy to attend a council meeting when I did have that in-person uh, visit that Charles referred to. And it was the best day of my life is all I can see, uh, is all I can say. And to see the, the um, athlete leaders there and the, the, the thinking that they had and the substance behind what they wanted to achieve and their methods of communicating with each other and collaborating with the wider uh, athletes in the region uh, was, was, was just amazing, amazing. Um, it's very strong. So please use the Athlete Input Council leadership uh, as well. And of course, to uh, Niasha and uh, Clement, who serve on the board of directors and who always brings the thoughts of uh, all of the region uh, to these uh, board meetings, which is fantastic that the board can get a glimpse of what it's like on the ground for, uh, for, for you, the leaders. Finally, let me thank Charles and his team. What an amazing, really, Charles, you've done an outstanding job together with the members of your team. And this conference is a real uh, reflection of how you do your daily work. It's professional, it's well thought out. There's a great, great uh, agenda. There'll be lots of opportunity for people to connect with each other after the conference. And that's really what we're looking for in Special Olympics. So great leadership there from uh, Charles and the entire uh, team. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful uh, leadership conference. I know that you, uh, you will, you always do. 
And I do look forward when travel is back to be able to attend one of your uh, conferences. So take, take care and enjoy the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. Really, really appreciate those, those words and we take them very, very seriously. So on behalf of the Africa region leadership, I just want to say that uh, we are going to dwell on those words and uh, ensure that uh, we water you know, the seed and uh, harvest that. And uh, our leaders are always, always, you know, you know, on the ball to ensure that things, things are done according to, to, save, the, to save, save the athletes and uh, to, to break back that dignity. We really appreciate for, for those, those words. Thank you.